Hey guys, Dave here from Guns and Tactics, and this is my ultimate range side by side. I'm calling it the ultimate range mobile, and this has been something that has been in the works for a long, long time, and I'm excited to share the journey with you. Now, to start out with, this is going to be a multi part series, and I apologize, the bugs are atrocious out tonight, but uh, that's just part of Minnesota. So first things first, we're going to talk about the UTV overall, why I picked the Honda Pioneer, some of the benefits and features that the Honda Pioneer had for me and my family. Now there's going to be a couple of focused videos, in particular one on pretty much all the electrical work that I did as I wired a lot of accessories, the electrical mods like the dual battery mod, the isolator, the dome lights, the brackets that I had to fabricate for the dome and cargo lights, the bracket that I had to fabricate for the rear light bar. But then we'll also be uh, having a couple of focused product review videos, in particular one on the Switch Pro's RCR12, which is just a really, really cool switch and power control module that I have on this. And then additionally, I'm gonna have a focused video on the mirrors that I got from Seismic. These actually really enhanced the riding experience a lot more than I thought they would. I mean, just even when I first got the side-by-side, I really found myself missing mirrors and I tried using a traditional automotive mirror in the back and that didn't work out nearly as well as a dedicated UTV or side-by-side -side mirror. And then adding the side lighted mirrors really added a new element to it as well. So I'm super excited about that. If you wanna learn more about my side-by-side, -side, make sure you head on over to our webpage. A link will be in the description below and it will have links to all of the tools and supplies parts that I used, as well as some more information, and of course, easy access to all of the videos in the Ultimate Side-by-Side -side series. Now, as far as other focused videos, if there's something that you want to see or have questions about, uh, don't be afraid to leave a comment in the section down below, and I can try to have a video focusing specifically on that topic. Now, first things first, why I chose the Honda Pioneer. Number one, the Honda name brand and reputation of their motorsports is generally pretty positive. It's a well-known name brand. It's a well-known model. The Pioneer series has been out now on its fifth year, uh, and it's just an absolutely amazing machine for the most part. Now, is it perfect? No. Uh, is it the best of everything in different classes? No. But for me, it was the best machine for me. And it, in my opinion, it's kind of the best sport utility side-by-side -side on the market. And what I mean by that is that it's not the most sporty and it's not the most utility. Now, I looked at a bunch of different machines. I looked at some two-seaters. I looked at a John Deere. I looked at the various Polaris models. And what I found was that for me and my family, they just weren't the best. In order for me to get my whole family of four in here, I'd either have to get a four-seater. So on some models, I'd either be losing the cargo area or I would have a much longer and more expensive side-by-side. -side. Now, one of the things that made me kind of decide to get a side-by-side -side or a UTV versus a four-wheeler was that pretty much everybody I talked to who had a four-wheeler said they wished they had a side-by-side -side, or all the people I knew that had side-by-side say, dude, I don't regret it at all. And what started all of this is a favorite big boy of mine who's actually just off camera over there. And for Christmas last year, uh, mom and I decided to surprise him with a four-wheeler. And safety requirement, I had to get something to supervise his riding and go riding with him. So I told mama, hey, I gotta get like a four-wheeler or something as well. And I gotta say, uh, my wife is absolutely amazing. When I was shopping with her, she came out four-wheeler shopping. And then, like I said, everybody we talked to said, just get a side-by-side. -side. And then once the idea of that our whole family could come with, that kind of helped push us to that side-by-side -side option. And then once I was showing my wife uh, between this and one of the other brands and models I had it narrowed down to, she was just like, just get the Honda. It's the one that seems like you really want, make it happen. So we did, and this is the start of our family fun mobile. Now I'm not the most like technical, super off-road, weekend racer type of a guy, but one of the things that I did like about the Honda is that it has a traditional six-speed transmission versus the belts that some of the other brands use. Now is the transmission more robust and more reliable? Well, it certainly could be, and that's what I'm reading, versus a lot of people who report having problems with belts, especially when they get wet, or they maybe rip or break a belt or anything like that. Now does that mean that there's other parts 
parts that can go wrong, such as clutches and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. But overall, I really like having the transmission. And this is what I like to call the his and hers. It has an automatic, high-low, four-wheel lock, four-wheel unlock, two-wheel drive lock, two-wheel drive unlock, or a turf mode so it doesn't tear up your grass. And then you can also manually shift it as well. So really, no matter what type of riding you're doing, if you want to go fast, it has a sport mode. If you want to go low over some rocks or something like that, it has a low mode. Or if you need to tow, but it overall just it kind of fits everything that I've needed it to do so far, which for me is a little bit of play, driving to and from the range, and a little bit of work. It's kind of a little bit of everything. Now, I don't own a ton of land, but even you know, cutting up and hauling wood around my land or doing chores with the neighbors and hauling around a wood splitter and going to the lake and hauling up muck and things like that from the shore, this thing has just served me really, really well, and it so far has been a lot of fun as well. Speaking of towing, what I really liked about the Honda Pioneer is it had a 2,000 pound towing capacity and a 1,000 pound cargo capacity, which hauling lumber, hauling various yard work stuff, mulch, trailers, absolutely awesome. Now this model is the Honda Pioneer 1005. The 1000 is the engine size, it is a 1000cc motor, and then five indicates the number of passengers. It is technically a five seating machine, which means I have seat belts, to seat five people, three up front in the bench and then two in the back. So this is the rear seat and it has the stow and go seats. Now it is a little dusty back here, but it does have a seat and a seat belt. Now I'm not gonna lie, this is not the most comfortable place to sit. However, I can sit back here and you know, would I wanna spend a whole day back here? No, but it's not horrible. And there is a company that's gonna be making an aftermarket booster, if you will. So that way a taller or more adult sized person will kinda of sit more off the ground and you can kinda of have a little bit more leg room. So I'm looking forward to checking those out. Uh, additionally, what I like though, ugh, what I also like with the four doors is that this door is actually hollow. Now you might be thinking to yourself, well geez, what's who cares? Big deal. It's hollow. It's lightweight. It's supposed to be. But once you put these body panels on, you can actually get these quick release hood clip buttons. Got these on Amazon. Post the link in the description below. But once you snap these off, I was able to cut this, put some weather stripping in here, and now I have an amazing storage area. Some guys I even saw were doing like a spray insulation, so they're having like a quasi cooler. Uh, I just want to be able to keep, you know, tools maybe towel, some rain gear, first aid kits, stuff like that. And I have this mirrored on the other side as well. And again, it just snaps on and off really quick. So I thought that was a really cool mod and something that, you know, those that know me know that I like compartments and storage and little bins and stuff. So that's why I also like the Honda Pioneer. Speaking of storage, check this out. Now under the driver's seat, this whole bench comes off and Honda sells like a little aftermarket kind of like a cubby thing that kind of goes in this hollow space here. The downside is you have to take the bench off to access it, which isn't too hard. It's just a, a buckler clamping type system there. But I thought, you know, that's kind of lame. So instead, what I found was this marine grade door. And now I have another little storage compartment and it's big enough. I have just a little camp chair. However, some guys fit ammo cans, tools, storage, again, rain gear, towels, you know, whatever it might be. And it's just a nice, Nice little handy storage area. Now, as far as different trim levels, there's the basic model, the deluxe, and then a limited model. And I was fortunate enough to buy mine pre kind of COVID panic. So supply was not as much of a problem as it is now. I got a 2019 closeout model. So mine was a year old, if you will, and it's a basic model, but it does come with power steering, the automatic manual transmission, and it does have a locking differential, which I thought was really cool versus the I four wheel drive on some of the more expensive models. Now it doesn't have the nicer shocks and it didn't come with the body panels that you're seeing. So the base model was a little bit more stripped down, but because I was able to get such a good deal on it and because I hated the color red that it came with initially, I knew that I'd be swapping the color and I was able to find body panels online for a pretty reasonable price to switch it out to the gray, which again, you guys know me, gray and green are my colors. I had the pads custom upholstered as long as the elbow pads custom made just to kind of tie everything together and then i also did a little bit of trim and customization to kind of get the rest of the colors to tie in to my particular color scheme now as far as which accessories and mods and things like that 
is I started again talking to all my friends who had side-by-sides and UTVs and I would start to take notes and some of them would say man I wish I had a windshield or man I wish I got a glass windshield instead of a plastic windshield man I wish I had dome lights I wish I had cargo lights I wish I had reverse lights I wish I had turn signals and I was just like you know what I'm just gonna make a list save up and I'm gonna do them all and that's what I'm gonna go over with you guys in this video because I went with the Switch Pro RCR12 to kind of control all of my accessories and power all of my accessories, I had multiple outputs, switches, and things like that at my basically disposal to kind of configure the machine how I wanted to. And one of the things that I really wanted to do was basically make it street legal. Minnesota doesn't authorize street legal UTV use yet, I'm hoping maybe someday, but several states do. So I figure if I ever get into this enough where I'm gonna be traveling with my kids on vacations or whatever, and I wanted to go to those states that allow street level uh, side-by-side or UTV travel, I wanted to be ready. So I wired in turn signals, front and rear, I also wired in a third brake light on the rear light bar, as well as reverse lights. Now, as far as accessories go, I have to say, um, I like all the accessories that I went with, but that rear light bar is really cool. Dave and the crew at rearlightbar.com did an amazing job. I called him up, I said, hey, this is what I wanna do, can you make me a custom light bar? And he knocked it out of the park, and their customer support was absolutely amazing. Even when I had dumb questions or didn't really understand how it should be wired because you know he had it set up for kind of a Baja car type thing, and I had to tell him, hey, this is how I I want to control it this is how I want to wire it he was able to help me out through the whole process and he was able to get that light bar working and it's just really cool it almost looks like it's factory back there it has turn signals reverse lights and the third brake light I absolutely love it and then as far as the turn signals up front I went with the Phoenix LED surface mount little modules they're really common in like emergency vehicle lighting but I was able to program them to either be steady burn for like a daytime running light or a parking light left or right turn signal or even like a hazard or strobe type function one of the things I learned early on riding a side-by-side -side in Minnesota in cold weather is you need a windshield, otherwise it's really, really cold. All that wind just hitting you right in the face, even when you're wearing a helmet with goggles, it's still like absolutely freezing cold. This windshield is from UTV801 and it is absolutely an amazing piece of glass, which usually is something I say for scopes. But what I really like about this is it was relatively easy to install. It's solid glass, automotive grade, so it's not gonna chip or scratch easily. And it really does a great job of blocking that cold weather. Now in the warm weather, I also have these vents which I can open up so I can get a little bit more airflow or it's easy enough where if I wanted to take it off for the hot riding weather months, I certainly could, although I haven't yet. But it works really, really great. And again, the customer service I got from these guys was absolutely awesome. My wife actually ordered this for me as a surprise for my birthday and they were nice enough to even throw in a uh, windshield wiper, which I thought was just a cool, nice touch. So again, just a cool windshield, cool guys, offers ventilation and it's a made in America product. One other thing I noticed when it came to riding out in the dust or in you know leaves or grass or debris or whatever else was that it was pretty common, especially once I added a windshield, that dust would kind of roll back in the back. And if anybody was sitting back there, it would kind of get really dusty. So a couple things that I added for that was the mesh roof and the mesh back from Shade Idea. Now they didn't initially make one for the back, so I had to kind of send some pictures. We got to go back and forth on measurements, but ultimately they made the rear mesh. They already made the rooftop mesh and it just secures with bungees. And it actually does a really nice job of really reducing the inside temperature. Uh, I would say by probably 10, 15 degrees on like a super hot day based on my little you know laser thermometer, but it still allows a decent amount of airflow, so it kind of feels like a convertible, but it also really does uh, give you some more shade. And it's attached with bungee cords, so it's super easy to take them on and off. You can roll up the back if you still wanted to use the cargo spot. But I also noticed that the dust on the inside cut down tremendously, like almost non-existent, even when riding down dusty trails. I don't know how much night riding I'm really gonna do. I'm kind of just a regular homeowner, but I like to drive this to and from the range and maybe take it some, on some trips and things like that. But I wanted to have enough lighting so that way even if I did get caught out in dark I don't care it'd be no big deal so I added the 50 inch light bar this is a dual color light bar so it has an amber function if I'm going through snow or dust or debris or rain and it also has white LEDs which are super bright and this is from Sierra LED now I did get a little bit of a deal on this but so far I'm really impressed with the light bar now as far as mounting the light bar I used these brackets here and these were just super slick to install Tim was nice enough to send me a set of these brackets which I'll post a link down below on where you can get them but basically they bolt right up to your frame, drilled a couple holes, bolted the brackets in, and then bolted the light bar together to that. I had to bend it in just a little bit because this bracket is made for more like 52 to 54 inch light bars, but it was super easy to do. 
I was able to do it by myself, even though a helper is recommended. Speaking of lights, I did get the seismic lighted side mirrors. It does have dual LEDs, a white and a green. And these are actually much brighter than I thought they would be. Not only do they add kind of a cool factor, plus they're green, which is kind of my jam, but they're also a really great surround light or a rock light. Now, I was going over some rocks at night and just being able to throw those mirrors on and just illuminate exactly what's outside my door was super nice. I'll also have a full dedicated review to the side mirrors and the center rear view mirror in an upcoming video, kind of highlighting the installation and the amazing features that these mirrors offer. Again, I was really, really impressed. The only other thing that I have yet to add is a winch. I know if I'm gonna be doing any sort of serious trail riding, a winch is gonna be a must have item. I'm still doing some research on that. Obviously there's the well-known established brands out there, but also those are a lot of money. So I might try my options to see what else is out there, but I definitely have more research to do. And now I know the reason why I mentioned that is I know I'm gonna get some comments saying, that's not a real UTV, you don't even have a winch but it is coming. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. This again is part one of my ultimate dream side-by-side. -side. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do, please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Again, if there is any specific content you wanna see, questions, focused videos, or whatever, go ahead and sound off in that comment section below and I'll do my best to answer those questions or maybe even make a video dedicated on that topic. Thank you guys very much for watching and have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.